I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, you're going to learn how to use your multimeter. Now, I know a lot of my viewers already know how to use a multimeter. <laughs> this video isn't necessarily for you, but there's a lot of people out there who are new to the hobby, and I think it's important that those of us who've been doing this for a long time never forget that there's people out there who are, who are just befuddled by what the heck is all going on here. And I've actually had some viewers request uh, in the comments of how to use a multimeter series. So I, I'm going to start today with video number one in that series where we explore the continuity function. Stay tuned. So this is my multimeter, and since I know you're going to ask, it's the Innova 3320. Uh, it's available on Amazon. That's where I buy it, and it runs. I don't remember. It's like I think it's like less than 20 bucks. It's, I'm sure it's less than 25 bucks for sure. It is not the most expensive multimeter. It's not the most full featured multimeter, but it is the one that I keep buying again and again when it breaks. I've bought two or three of them in my lifetime. They last. They don't last forever, uh, and I keep going back to it because it's small, it's light, it's simple, it's cheap. And it has the exact functions I use the most, and they're really super easy to get to. I once bought a more expensive multimeter with more functions, and the thing that annoyed me the most was the ohms test, the resistance test function, was not directly on the dial. You switch to the ohms test function, and there were like two or three other functions on that dial. I don't remember what they were, and you had to like push a button to get to them. And I'm like, how stupid is that? The most common thing, one of the most common things you do, you got to flip the dial and push a button to get to. And I said, I'll never again. I just keep buying this one again and again. The function we're going to look at today is the continuity function. And you might think that when you start working with a multimeter, you the first thing you would look at would be measuring volts. That's what you think of when a multimeter measures volts, right? But I have to say that the continuity function is probably the most commonly used function for me. Uh, the continuity function, the way it works is when you go into that mode, and you touch the leads together, you get a beep. And the beep tells you that electricity will flow from point A to point B, wherever those leads are touching. So right now there is no beep, because if there was a voltage applied at these two locations, no electricity would flow. But if I take a piece of wire, like this piece of wire here, and I touch the leads to it, so I'm touching the lead to one end and the other end, and I get a beep. And that's telling us, shocker, no pun intended, electricity will flow through this wire. Now, that's true for anything that is electrically conductive. So I take this hemostat here, and sure enough, make a liar of me. There we go. This is uh, this metal may have a little bit of a coating or something on the surface. There was some kind of rust-proof coating. It's stainless steel, so I have to scratch it a little to get the beep. Oh, well. There you go. It tells us continuity is flowing. Now, there's two ways that you can use that. One way that you can use that is to find out if there is continuity when there shouldn't be. So here is a copter that I'm working on. And if you have a copter and there's continuity between the positive and the negative battery lead, then when you plug in the battery, you'll get a short and you might get a fire, you might ruin your battery. So in general, you do not want continuity between the positive and the negative battery lead. So what I can do is I can take these probes and I can touch them to the positive and the negative battery lead. And I don't hear any beep and that's a good thing. If I were to touch them and hear a beep, I would know that if I plug in a battery, I'm in for a bad time. Now you may be wondering, does it matter whether I use the red or the black probe in any, in any given location? Uh, and the answer is that for the continuity function, it does not. The continuity function, it usually doesn't matter which direction it's going from positive to negative or negative to positive. So you can see if I flip these over, the answer doesn't change. And likewise, if I were to take this wire and touch them, it wouldn't matter which one was touching which end of the wire, the electricity flows both directions. The exception to that rule is if you have a capacitor, and many of our quadcopters do have capacitors on them. If you do have a capacitor, what you'll find is that when you apply the leads one way, you get nothing. When you apply the leads the other way, you get a beep very briefly and then it stops. And what's happening there is that the capacitor is charging up. I'm going to discharge the capacitor now just by shorting the leads together. What happens there is that the capacitor can take a small amount of, of electrical energy, electrical potential. And so when we touch these leads, electricity flows for a very brief moment and then stops. So again, I'll demonstrate if I go the black to the negative and the red to the positive, the capacitor 
only let electricity flow one direction though. So if I take the leads one way, nothing happens. But if I flip the capacitor over, we get a beep and then it stops. So if you have a quadcopter and you touch the leads and you hear a beep, just hold them there for a second. And if it stops, that's just your capacitors on maybe your ESCs or your PDB. That's just your capacitors charging up. And as long as it stops, you're fine. The other thing we can do with the continuity test function is we can find out what the pads are on a component, like for example, this ESC. And that is actually the topic that brought me to this video. I'm replacing the ESCs on this copter and the ESCs aren't very well marked. And I am actually not 100% sure which of these two pads is the ground pad. And as you know, if you've ever done it, if you reverse wire an ESC, the smoke comes out and the ESC is no good anymore. So I know that one of these is the ground pad and one of these is the positive pad. Okay. And also I know that this is either the signal pad or the ground pad, right? And so I can use the continuity test function to try and find out which of these is the ground pad. So I know that the ground pads on a device are generally all in parallel with each other. And that means they'll all have continuity with each other. Let me demonstrate that for you. So if I go to the PDB here on this copter and I touch the negative uh, terminal, uh, battery terminal with one lead and I go around to the ESC terminals, what you'll see is I have continuity between all of the grounded pa pads. They all have continuity with each other and that's normal. The, the electricity flows to all of those locations. It's normal for ground to have continuity across the board. Uh, and that's true really of anything grounded. So for example, if I touch the SMA connector, so I've got again one on the negative, and if I touch the SMA connector, it's usually grounded as well. So the ground, ground is ground pretty much anywhere. I can even touch the screw hole. That's all grounded. Ground is ground pretty much anywhere. So if we go back to the ESC, the reason that's important is I know that ground is ground pretty much anywhere. And in fact, positive is positive pretty much anywhere but signal is always isolated. If you were to have signal be connected to ground, then the signal could not go up and down and carry the actual data that we're trying to carry. So I know that the signal wire is gonna be isolated. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to touch one of these pads with one lead, and then I'm gonna to touch one of these other two lead, pads with the other lead, and I'm gonna try and figure out which of these two have continuity. And when I find two that have continuity, I will know that they're both ground because on this ESC, any, the only two pads that are ever intended to have continuity with each other are gonna be the two ground pads. And what I should find is that these two pads right next to each other, yeah, in fact, there, there we go. Those have continuity. And I'm actually not surprised to find that because oftentimes you'll have ground pads in close proximity with each other because it's easier to design the circuit board if those two pads uh, that, that are supposed to have continuity are in physical proximity with each other as well. So if I check here, I do not have, if you ever have, test an ESC and you have continuity between the main uh, positive and negative terminals, uh, then a, the ESC is dead. <laughs> it's no good. Um, there you go. I can see now that these two are ground because they have continuity and that's the only thing on the ESC that's going to have continuity like that. Here's another quick tip for you before I sign off. If you ever do uh, test your PDB and you find that you have continuity between the two main battery leads, uh, which is a short, which is no good, something ain't right, then how do you troubleshoot that? How do you solve that issue? And unfortunately, finding a short is essentially a matter of trial and error. What you have to do is you have to start desoldering things one at a time. And when you desolder the thing that's causing the short, the problem goes away. Uh, it's, it's purely trial and error. So for example, if you were just soldering on the ESCs, you just put new motors on, and when you go back to test and before you power up again, anytime you work on your copter, number one, always use a smoke stopper when the first time you plug the battery in. And, and if you don't know what a smoke stopper is, I have a video on my channel about that. Um, and it then also check with a multimeter to see if there's continuity between positive and negative. Uh, and if you test it and you find that, well, the first thing I would do is I would start desoldering the ESCs which is gonna be a really sad thing to do if you just spent all night installing them, but you can't fly when you have continuity between positive and negative. You, you're gonna smoke the battery, the back cup, you're not gonna have a good time. So you just gotta start desoldering the ESCs one at a time until it goes away, and then you know that was the ESC that had the problem. At that point, you could then test the ESC itself, looking for continuity between the positive and negative pads to confirm that the ESC is the one with the short 
and then it's the damaged one. Well, okay, that's going to bring us to the end of this video. The first video in my uh, probably not terribly frequent, but uh, ongoing, hopefully ongoing series about how to use your multimeter. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.